We study the fundamental principles of collective behaviour. Collective behaviour is all around us, it's also within us, our bodies are a collective. When we look around we see fish schools and bird flocks. Uh, why do we see these types of collective organisations? What does it give animals? It's an extremely exciting time to study collectives. We now have the technology, we're developing the technology that allow us to track the motion of hundreds of individuals simultaneously, to know their identities, to be able to reconstruct their visual fields, and even to immerse real organisms in holographic virtual environments. When we observe collective behavior, we often think of what the advantages could be of being part of a group. Although sometimes increased proximity between individuals can also bring disadvantages, such as an increase of the transmission of parasites or diseases in general. The main aspect of my research is understanding the effect of the presence of parasitized individuals within groups. For these experiments, we use tracking technologies that have been developed in the lab. With this software, I can keep information about the individual identity, as well as having highly detailed information about this, the posture. And this posture information can be used to understand whether there are major differences between healthy and diseased individuals in terms of frequency and amplitude of tail beats, for example. This is our large experimental arena. Uh, it's a three by three meter uh, aquarium where we can put up to 4,000 fish uh, here today we have about 500 sunbleaks uh, swimming about the tank. And we can film them from above using a 2x2 two two multi-camera array uh, such that we can get high-resolution images of the fish as they swim about the tank. Using our multi-point projection system, we can project patterns onto the floor of the tank to, say for example, mimic naturalistic environments or, well really the sky's the limit. Um, we can project videos onto the bottom of the tank to influence the behavior of our collectives. By projecting patterns of moving dots onto the floor of the tank, we can influence the behavior of large schools of fish uh, and ask how they can process information. Here, for example, we've induced the swarm to spin, and by reversing the direction of rotation of the dots, we can induce a directional change in the group. One of the great challenges in studying collectives is to be able to understand the causal factors, what drives individuals to change behavior. This is very difficult to study using traditional methodology. And so we have been working together with colleagues to develop holographic virtual reality, whereby we can embed real organisms in photorealistic, three-dimensional holographic environments. We can look at how they interact both with each other and with physical structures and their environment. And this gives us completely new insights into behavior. Basically how this works is that um, we have one um, real fish in this, this bowl and it is freely swimming in the bowl, um, tracked with four cameras from above that give us the, the exact um, position of the fish in 3D in real time. This is all happening very fast. So in order to create um, an illusion of a 3D object, of a, an object that's popping out of the screen and it appears to be in the same body of water as the real fish, the projection needs to change in real time according to the position, according to the perspective of that one individual. So one thing we could do um, with uh, these machines is to actually connect them together. Basically, they're in two different bowls, they're in two different environments, but they're in the same virtual environment. With these virtual reality systems, we can test when and how the real fish make decisions while receiving information from multiple neighbors. For example, we can test how the real fish um, choose individual to follow. We can project two different virtual fish with different speed, with different size. We've needed to develop completely new ways of understanding animal behavior, new ways of tracking animals in large environments such as our new imaging barn. So, welcome to the barn. This imaging barn is a, this high-tech facility 
it's a new type of microscope uh, showing very detailed behavior of animals. It used to be an old barn. The size of it is 15 by 7 meter and it's 4 meter height. So this is a tiny marker which reflects back the infrared light. The center of these markers can be tracked with submillimeter precision. If the animal is big enough that we can have several of these markers, then we can define uh, unique patterns which allows us to identify each individual. We can have up to, let's say, 100 individuals. The system that we have here with 30 cameras, they throw infrared light at it for which they record the reflection. And for each reflection in different cameras, the, the markers are detected. And just like we see any object with our eyes in stereo, similarly, these cameras identify these points and then triangulate their position. This is how we, are we get the three-dimensional positions of each marker. Well, in addition to the, to the cameras and the Vicon system, we have a 30 microphone array installed at the ceiling of the barn here. And there are 30 microphones, microphones as tiny as this one that I'm holding here, um, attached to the ceiling right next to the cameras where the foam was placed. And uh, we can use those 30 microphones to record the sound that is being produced within the barn. And because the microphones are spread all over in the ceiling of the barn, we can use the time of arrival difference to calculate the position uh, where the sound was produced. I use starlings, um, and we actually put them in the barn uh, to be able to record how groups of individuals move around the barn, move from the perches that they're on to the foraging beds that we have for them to try to understand if they're using very specific vocalizations or calls to actually make decisions on where to forage and when to forage as a group. We've also been pioneering the technologies required to study these animals in their natural environments, such as using drones to track animals and also to reconstruct the complex three-dimensional structure of the habitat to which they move. So in our research we're looking at the collective behavior of wild herbivores in Kenya, uh, so zebras and buffaloes, and we're taking some of the data collection and analysis techniques that have been developed in the lab and bringing them to the wild in Kenya where we can watch real animal groups with re real relationships between individuals make decisions on complex landscapes. Yeah, so it's really cool because in the past, it was only possible to, to track large groups of animals in the lab in beautiful lighting conditions in white tanks. But after the, the development of convolutional neural networks and deep learning over the past you know, five plus years, it's actually been possible to take these same computer vision techniques and apply them in the field. So we can actually locate each individual and watch what it's doing. Uh, so it's like GPS, but even more because we can get locations of every individual, but then also um, using other software, things like head position, uh, tail movement, body posture. Working in these really interesting natural environments, um, it's important that we quantify those. So we also use drones to make 3D uh, habitat maps, and then we can explicitly account for what an inv individual in that environment can see and how that information access affects its behavior much too difficult to get this level of data um, just by sitting in a Land Rover watching animals with binoculars. So this new technology is really opening a new world to get a fresh look at these species and some of the classic questions in our field. We want Constance to become the global hub for the study of collective behavior. We welcome researchers from all around the world to come to join us here to utilize these remarkable facilities and enjoy this beautiful location.